I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. A silent eye, who I used to be, I am redeemed. I'm redeemed. Yeah. All my life I have been called unworthy. Named by the voice of my shame and regret. But when I hear you whisper, child, lift up your head. I remember, oh God, you're not done with me yet. I am redeemed. You set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains. Wipe away every stain Cause I'm not who I used to be Because I don't have to be The old man inside of me But his day is long dead and gone Because I've got a new name A new life, I'm not the same And I hope that will carry me home I am redeemed, you set me free, so I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain, cause I'm not who I used to be, I am redeemed, you set me free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains and wipe away every stain. I'm not who I used to be. Oh God, I'm not who I used to be. Be free. I am redeemed.
I still remember the day he saved me, the day I heard him call out my name. He said he loved me and would never leave me, and I've never been the same. And give you praise, and give you praise, for great is our faithfulness. Anybody else got a testimony before a pastor comes or a preacher who comes? Well, he has been good. You know, uh, I'm not getting no younger, and I look around, you know, I was talking to a friend the other day, you know, about who always come to church, and uh, you can almost count the old church on your two hands now and you know when I first started coming you know, a lot of those folks ain't here but they on the glory you know and I look at you know the ones that our youth yesterday at the at the homecoming was phenomenal I mean it's unreal to, to stop and just stand at the top of the bank and look down you know, I think it was me and Jim was talking you know there was hundreds of them I didn't have a clue who they were or on a name basis, I knew their parents or whatever, but, and he said, you know, that's the church tomorrow. I said, no, that's the church of today because tomorrow's church, we got to start looking because we already have that church now, you know, bringing them up through them now. But, you know, you know I'm thankful that, you know, I, the guys talking to, you know, a hundred was a big crowd for them on their homecoming. And I thought, you know, there was probably, I'm guessing, I'm probably not very far off. There was probably between four and five hundred come through throughout the day and how blessed we are as a church you know, and you know that speaks highly of the church as far as the love that we're throwing out to the community and uh, I'm glad to be a part of it and uh, it makes me proud that you know we all chipped in and done it it wasn't Pastor Isaiah it wasn't you it wasn't me it was all of us and uh, I thank you for that because there's been times when uh, me and Dana's had a few doubts but the Lord's you know, carried us through uh, before on a homecoming at 7 o'clock and there's only two or three of us here. And, but, uh, you know, yesterday was a homecoming that it just seemed like it fell together. And uh, I thank everyone for helping. So, you preaching, Brother Ron? Try it. Come on. Thinking about a homecoming, one day we're going to get to go to heaven. How many of y'all are ready? My goodness, if you're not, you ought to get ready. I think about homecoming, 96 years. 51 of them I've been here in the community, a part of the church. I don't know what that makes me, but I think I'm getting old. I feel that way sometime. Don't laugh, Brother Buddy, you are too. Uh, we're just getting that away. I thought about what the choir sang about tonight. And uh, I thought about as well what the Lord has been talking to my heart for a couple of weeks and what He wanted me to preach tonight. And how many of y'all are redeemed? Have you, have you been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb? Raise your hand up and just hold it there just a little bit because, hey, look, without that you can't go to heaven. Without that you have no hope in this world nor the world to come. 
but we serve a Savior that loves us enough to come down to where we were, pick us up and place us where we are, and where we are is not where we're going to stay, but he's going to retrieve us from here into a place called heaven. I don't know what that does for you, but picking an old boy up out of Lincoln County and putting him on the streets of gold gives me an understanding that he loves me. I couldn't go. 19th chapter of the book of Job. If you'd like to meet me there in just a moment. The book of Job is a very old book. It goes back before the resurrection, all right? It goes back beyond, before the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. It goes back beyond and before Christ ever blinked on that third day. Came up out of the grave, closed through the door that was closed. And Job understood something that many have failed to understand. And yet, hundreds and hundreds of years before Christ ever came up, he said there in verse 25 that I want you to read when we get there and read it out loud. I'm going to begin at verse 23. And when we get to 25, I would like for everybody with an open Bible to read verse 23. 25. It says, Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. Well, they are. They are. That they were graven with an iron pen and lead in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day on the earth. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for all you do, how you've done it. Thank you for the privilege to preach, and thank you for a pastor that lets me. And thank you, Father, for all that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you for the 96 years God, that you bless this church and this community. Thank you for loving it so much that you would redeem it from where it was, from the bootlegged hollers, homes of repute, sickness, and death. Thank you for your goodness that now reigns forever. God, help me to preach tonight. I can't do it without you. Lord, speak to someone's heart is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. There were some 100 names given to the Lord in Scripture. 100 names that were pointed to the Christ or to God. God of all creation, the help of all mankind. And it was there that we might be able to understand them. It says God is called the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. The Word of God tells us that He is the great I Am, the creator of all the ends of the earth. The Word of God says Jesus is called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. They call Him the Door and the Rose and the Star and the Altogether Lovely, but my favorite in all of the realm of the Word of God is found over in the book of Isaiah, chapter 22. And beginning there at verse 1, and it says, And I will clothe him with thy robe and strengthen him with thy girdle. 
and I shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and no man shall shut. And he shall shut, and none shall open it. And verse 23 is my favorite depiction of the Lord Jesus Christ. And here it says, And I will fasten him as a nail in a sure place. A nail in a sure place. And there shall be for a glorious throne to his father's house. A nail fastened in a sure place. That means, that tells me that I can hang it all on him. That lets me know that, that, that all of my salvation, all of my security, all of my hopes, all of my dreams, all that I am, all of my children, all of my sickness and hurt, all of the difficulties that I face in life, I can hang on Him. And it's fastened in a sure place that I may be able to rest assured at the end of the day, Pastor, it's still hanging there. It's still there that I may be able to rejoice in who he is and what he's done, and he's a nail fastened in a sure place. That means you can't jerk it down, you can't pull it up, you can't yake it out. It's there for all of eternity. And Job said, I know that my Redeemer lives. No, he's alive. What if you know that tonight? What if you're aware deep down in your soul that God's not dead, that he's alive forevermore, that he's there for us, that we might be able to understand and know that he is our redeemer. How many of y'all out there had a redeemer? Let me see your hand again. Hey, every now and then you ought to just raise your hand and say, I've got a redeemer. He's real in my life. He redeemed me from a fallen state. Now, the Hebrew word, you probably aren't interested in, but it's G-O-E-L, goel, the Hebrew word. It means redeemer in the Old Testament. The redeemer was in the Old Testament before he ever came to the New Testament. Let me just tell you that. He was there. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Hey, who was it when he said, let us make man in our own image, in our own likeness? Who was it? It was the Redeemer God was talking about that Job spoke of in the Old Testament that hung on the cross in the New. We might have life. We that were covered up in bondage, wore out by the commonness of sin, and the irregularities of all of the evil that was going on in your day and mine. Hey, listen, but there was someone that came along. Hey, listen, let me, you know what a redeemer is? Hey, listen, if a person got himself into a financial situation in the Old Testament, the old time, he got himself so far in debt he couldn't get out and he had to sell himself. And he had to sell his little baby. Hey, did you know that there's some parents out there selling their little baby? Oh, they're not putting them up on the auction block, but they're doing everything in the world, and the world is just scarfing them up at a small price, at a little bit of payment. Hey, but I want you to know something. That's what the world is doing. Hey, they were forced to sell themselves in the slavery, and not only the things in this life, but they would sell any inheritance that they had coming to them. That means if their father was rich and they had a lot, they could sell what their daddy was going to give them. They could sell the inheritance. Let me tell you something tonight. Don't play around with your inheritance. Don't put it on the line. Don't lay it down. Don't play with what God has given to us because he opened up the windows of heaven and he saved us from sin. He delivered us from the ugliness of the world. And don't play with that. Hold that dear. Maintain that. 
But the Word of God tells us to know Job had lost everything. By the time you get to our text in the Scripture, I want you to know that Job had lost a great deal in his life. He had lost everything. People who live a life of sin, let me tell you something, die without Christ. They lost themselves without it. Do you know that all the world has a Redeemer? That He's alive, that He's there for them? might be able to understand them. They have lost the inheritance of heaven. And did you know the world outside us today is going down the roads of least resistance and have no thought of where their eternity might be? Did you understand that Jesus died on the cross so that they could go free from the penalty of sin and a property had been given from the portals of glory that that son may come down into an undeserving world and receive the nails of affliction upon his body to die and be raised the third day so that he might proclaim to a world I love you and I care about you and I will redeem you from your fallen condition but did you know you got to call upon the name of the Lord if you're going to be saved You've got to do that. A Redeemer would come to offer Himself in any way that He could to redeem you from, from whatever situation. If you've got a Redeemer, that means that if you get into trouble, there is somebody that will come to your rescue and put his and do whatever it might take. Did you know that uh, uh, living in sin has a payment and it's got a price to it, uh, but there's somebody that cares about that bondage that you are in. There's someone that is concerned. We read the Scripture that for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, Psalm 316, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. The next verse says, but God commendeth his love toward us. He commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ, the Christ, came to pay the price that we might be saved through him. The loss comes to us sometimes in this life. I think about Adam in the very bowers of Eden when, when he sinned and Adam forfeited his spiritual inheritance. He forfeited what he was and it, and it came to pass that he, it disenfranchised him as a, as a word in my time when they used it. Hey, they, they did away with, 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 with what he was able to receive. They took away from him that which, that, that which he had and he could no longer walk with God. He could no longer be with God. Has that ever happened to you that you might walk down through the corridors of this life and somehow get sucked into a place where God wouldn't walk with you, wouldn't be with you, and that there was a man that hung on the cross that came down and he said, I'll die for that sin and I'll rescue you and I'll deliver you from what's going on in your life. It robbed him of his nobility. It robbed him of that ability to walk with God and to be with God. Do you understand what I'm saying tonight? Hey, he has, we've got an elder brother. You know, a redeemer was a near kinsman. It was somebody that was near to the family, somebody that you could look up to, somebody that was there for you. He was, as a part of the family, their job was to rescue you from any difficulty that you were facing. If an enemy came in and he took you into another country and brought you into their captivity, he would go and he would pay any ransom. He would go and take care of any problem. He would go and pay any wage to retrieve. That was his job. That's what he did. That's what he was there for. That's who he was. Hey, they would bring you back home safe again because he was the redeemer. You were captured by Asher Banerful, Sennacherib, or one of them other Syrian emperors of the day that did a lot of damage to God's people. If you had a, I say, if you had a kinsman redeemer, 
He would go into those parts. He would find out the situation. No battle was too great. No payment was too great. No offering too great. He would do as much talking as he could, as he had to. He would do as much fighting as you would need to have done. It didn't matter about matter about the battle. He was going to come to where you were, and he was going to find you, and he was going to reach out his arm of strength and rescue. That is a redeemer, somebody that can come from where he is down to where you are and pull you out of a miry pit and establish your going and give you that which you need, which you had forfeited, which you had yourself given up on found yourself in such a circumstance. It, it was a redeemer. Job had lost his family. Ten caskets filled with the hallway of his home, seven sons and three daughters. All in one day, lined the hallway of Job's home. That's pretty sad. That's pretty down. His business was bankrupt. His finances were gone. We read on in the, in the scripture, his servants were dead. His family and his friends didn't care about him anymore. They had turned their backs upon him. And, and there he was in, the, in, the, in that situation with all the difficulties that were going on. Things weren't working out for him. That ever happened in your life? Seemed like everything comes to a close. His wife basically files for divorce. And Job was suffering boils from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. He was basically on the fifth floor on life support. He didn't have much going for him. Things, have you ever been there? Have you ever been down to where you didn't have it? And it wasn't there. That's what Job is talking about in this chapter. He knew what it was to need a Redeemer. If you don't need him, you probably don't understand what I'm talking about tonight. If you've never been there, if the finances have always been there, if the health has always been there, if your children have already been saved, if, if all conditions are always good and conditions are perfect, you may not know what I'm preaching about uh, this evening, but I want you to know, Job did. Job understood all of the difficulties of his life and that was given to him. Hey, and by the way, Satan didn't like him either. The devil like you. Does he know even who you are? Are you a problem to him? Or are you him kind of? Job knew who he was. Satan knew who he was. And when God's bunch got together, Satan pulled up real close and God said, hey, listen, Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Have you considered him for all of your shenanigans and all that's going on in your life? Has the devil ever considered you? Has God ever recommended you to him? and said, have you considered my servant and called out your name? What an experience. 1973, I heard a man say, I preached from a pulpit in Nashville, Tennessee, and he said, I want to be one of the ten most wanted in hell. It scared me to death. I was just a young man. I said, what kind of a new... And he said, and, and I got to talk to him after service, and I said, Mr. Uh, Brother Ravenhill, I said, why would you make such a statement as that? He said, if I could, I'd build revival right about three yards from hell, and I would tell them what it would take in order for them to be saved and let them hear the screams of that awful cry. I may be able to preach with more fervency and more help from God, but I may be able to be what he wants, but 
the man in hell knew who Satan or, or who Job was. That impresses me about Job probably more than anything else that I'm going But it cost him something. It cost him something. He's got ten children laying at his door. All of his servants are dead. All of his friends don't like him. Hey, listen, his money, his finances are out the window. That's enough right there to put us in shock and bring us into something else that we don't want to be. His wife turns on him and says, you're what a first guy in the Bible. And he's smitten from the top to the bottom. And life is draining from his body. It's that fella that rings out in our verse this evening. He said, I know. He said, he said, I don't know much. He said, things aren't looking good at my house. He said, but I know that my Redeemer is alive and that he shall stand at the last day. He said, I know him. He's alive and he's alive forevermore. Let me tell you, do you have a problem tonight? Are you all worked up tonight? Are there things going on in your life that ought not to be there? And do you understand that only God can make a difference? If there's something like that going on in your heart, raise your hand. If, if, if you've got a problem that's bigger than you are, are you afraid to raise your hand? You're going through something that only God can get you out of? Would you slip your hand up? and say, hey, I'm going through something that's bigger than I am. I know I am. I know it's at my door. I know it's at my house. I know there's difficulties out there that me and you just have no power over. Hey, listen, I ain't afraid tonight to raise my hand and say, God, I need some help. I need your hand to be a I need you. I need a redeemer. Let me ask you another question. Do you have do you have a redeemer? I know you're all perfect right now. No hands went up. Everybody's living the dream. But what if? What if you need him? What if? What if you need some redemption? You're someplace you shouldn't be. You're overpowered by a power bigger than you are. You're captured by the enemy. He has his hands upon your life. You're caught up in something that you shouldn't be. You go someplace you shouldn't be. You're living a life that you shouldn't live. Would you need a redeemer? Would you need somebody that could come in to where you are as a firefighter into a misty house that's filled with smoke? Would you need somebody to rescue from the perishing and care for you? Would you need somebody? Have you ever imagined yourself as needing a redeemer? I ask you tonight, do you have such an individual in your life? Can you raise your hand and say, Preacher, I may not need one now, but I've got one on the other side. Can you raise your hand and do that? You got a redeemer? Do you know he's alive? Do you know he's alive forevermore? Job said in that scripture, he said, I'm not, in all of his difficult, in everything he was going through, he said, I know that my Redeemer lives. If you know he's alive in your life, you ought to have a shout in your heart. There ought to be a joy going on within us that we know, hey, listen, it don't look real good. On the outside, Job was a mess. He didn't have anything pleasant going on. Did you know you can lose everything? But if God's still there, if he's still there, brings about something that you need more than anything else. He said, in everything, my Redeemer is alive. As I said before, it's before Easter, okay? It's before Easter. It's before April. It's before they sang the song. It's before the angel said, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here. He is risen like he said he was. It's before that. And all the problems.
problems come? What did they do back there, preacher? How did they get through life? Hey, they believed in redemption. They believed that there's a God that is able to retrieve them from their fallen mess that they were in. You ever needed that? Never needed it. Joe made the statement, I'm in need of redemption. But you know why people don't get saved? They don't need a redeemer. They, they, they don't see themselves in a situation that they can't get out of say, that themselves. But Joe said, I know that my redeemer is alive, and I know that my redeemer is alive to plead my cause and to come and pay the ransom, whatever it is. My Redeemer is alive, not to leave me where I was in my filthiness of sin and the rags of this world, but my Redeemer is alive, and He will bring back to me that which I was lost. And give me that which I needed. If you never needed that, you don't know what I'm talking about. But He said, my Redeemer lives. That means He's alive. My Redeemer is alive to give me back that, my inheritance, and give me my eternal home. Job knew that where his Redeemer was. The Apostle Paul wrote of the redemptive work of Christ in glowing terms, I believe. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 13, it says, Who hath delivered us? from the power of darkness. He knew what a redeemer was. Every now and then we will stand up and say, God save me from sin. Paul noted it as the powers of darkness had hold of my life. The powers of evil had so entangled themselves in who I was that they separated me from all life. There was no life about who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of His dear Son. Hey, they've took, taken us out of the darkness of the damned and the despondent and those that are eternally there. And He brought us up to sit us in heavenly place. In Christ Jesus. He, he delivered us out of darkness into the presence of His dear Son in whom we have redemption. Verse 14, through, the, through His blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Now, for all you that didn't raise your hand while ago, what a Redeemer does is if we sin, We've got an advocate, and the New Testament lets us know that there's someone that will go and advocate on our behalf. God sends us. When we come short, there is an advocate. What he does is speak to us because of the problem we're in. Jesus, our Redeemer, has rescued us from the domain of darkness. Brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light of His dear Son and made it possible that we could walk in that light. Now, he's brought us into the kingdom of His dear Son. He has forgiven our sins. I know we sing songs about it. I appreciate the two. I don't know what who picked them out, but I appreciate it it went along with my heart this evening. We can sing about redemption but, and we can experience redemption. And, but let me tell you something. Until you really need it, it's just something the preacher preached about. It's just something the choir sang about. Hey, but when it's something that you need, it's like finding the golden ring. It's like finding something that is valuable to you. It's finding a treasure that's been buried all around you. It's the joy that springs up into your soul when you realize that it was God and His Son that raised His hand sometime in eternity past that said, Ron needs a Savior. I'll be there. I'll be. Have you ever got that call, somebody call you? midnight hour. 
spirit coming through the phone. And you know what they're wanting me to do is come to where they are. That's what they want. Pastor's had it a dozen times or more. Had it one time. And I know what they're wanting. They're needing someone there. I believe it's important to know the preacher, don't you? I believe it's important to know somebody that you can call on in the time of your trouble. It's, it, it's important to know, have somebody on your cell phone, someplace lodged away that when I get in trouble, I'll call her, I'll call him. But until, hey, listen, there's some things that man over there can't do. There's some things that your Sunday school teacher can't do. There's some things that your mommy can't do and your daddy can't do. Someplace in all of our technology in the technology field that we live in, someplace there ought to be someplace in there to where you could just push the number God. Say, God, I need you. I need you every hour. I need you for day. God understood all of that. Job said, his redeemers lie. Do you know yours or not? Do you know where he's at? Let me just mention another verse of Scripture, and I'll get, I'll, I'll get down from here. 1 Peter 1.18, Jesus has redeemed us with a very special price that's been affixed to his salvation. And in 1 Peter 1.18, he says, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by the tradition of your fathers. He said, But the precious thing, the precious thing is the blood of Christ. The blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot was delivered for us that we might go free. If we indeed think or feel that we have been redeemed and God is the one that has redeemed us, there should not be anything we wouldn't do there should not be a condition that we would put on anything God would have us do. And we should always be standing in line to say, God, let me do it. Let me do it. Let me be about your business. Let me be where you want me to be. Hey, and if you don't know Christ tonight, I want you to understand something, that there is somebody that cares about you. Lost in sin without any hope. Having no hope. Psalm 78, 35. And they remembered that God was their rock and the high God their redeemer. They remembered that. Sometimes, and I, I don't know what was going on in Job's life. I know that if one tenth of all that was going on in Job's life, I don't know how he must have been able to make that statement. I know that my God reigns. I know that my Redeemer lives. The only thing I can tell you about, I've been in situations where you didn't have time to think. You didn't have time to pray. And it wasn't near where Job was. It wasn't near that extensive emotion. And yet Job had the ability to proclaim out through generations and generations and just he said, I would to God that it was written down somewhere. Mark someplace. I believe old Job had understood it. I believe he had studied that before. I believe so. It didn't come to him when his son died. It didn't come to him when the Sabaeans came through and killed his son. It didn't come to him. All of his wealth was gone. Didn't have any place else to turn. I believe he learned that in Sunday school. I believe he learned that a little bit earlier. That's not something you pick up on the deathbed or in the death scene. It's something you know in deep down in your heart 
that everything is well with my soul because when problems come so heavy upon you that you can't get up and preach on Sunday morning, when the problems in life come and the wickedness of this world overpower that you seemingly don't have the word to say. If you don't already know that you've got to do it, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Falling down in the depths of his despair, seeing out there when, when all of his friends came around and Job was scraping himself because of his condition. He knew deep in the dust of himself that his Redeemer was alive. This is my message. I hope you know tonight that your Redeemer lives part of the family that's there, part of the family that you once had, somebody that cares about you, someone that's concerned about who you are and what's going on in your life. Know that you've got a Redeemer and He's alive forevermore. Would you stand with me tonight as we get somebody to sing? I don't know what your relationship to God might be.